is to get people to talk about Peter and what he meant to them and what he meant to the community and see if there's enough in interesting information to put it together into a blog post or maybe later down the road into a larger documentary about our neighbors that live on the street. Hi. Did you know him? Would you be interested in talking about him for a memorial film? A memorial film? Sure, like right now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll ask Hi. you a few questions. Okay. Hi, what's your name? My name's Madison. And how did you know Peter? Um, I used I grew up around here. I used to um, I used to watch see him like every day when I went to school. How how many years have you known him? <sighs> Five, maybe six. He was a cheery guy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. And so he's been here in the same spot for 14 years? Oh. I, it would have been 1999, oh. I believe that I, yeah, yeah, it's been a long time, yeah. When he first sort of showed up, he started going to my church for a little bit, um, but he was sort of a notorious anti-Catholic, so that didn't last very long. But uh, he moved around for a little bit and then he just finally parked right here and had been there for a few years um, and when he first came I guess we would talk to him when he was you know he was very very talkative very talkative um, so yeah we just talked to him and tried to figure out his life story which was complicated and convoluted at times but um, <laughs> My mom actually works on this block, so she, he knew the whole family. My husband and Marley and everybody. And he had little quips for all of us. Marley, sit down, or just stop moving for a second. I'm um, sorry. Hold different still. quips or the same? Um, well, he would always say to her, take care of your mommy, every time he saw her. Um, anytime he saw a couple together, that was the no skinny dipping. So when he saw, when my husband and I actually first started dating in high school, uh, he would start saying to us, no skinny dipping. Um, for my mom, he would say, oh, it's my favorite 16 year old. And uh, he would say things about how he used to date Diana, Princess, Princess Diana in high school or something. And he would say like, you know, oh, I don't know, something like, she's nothing compared to you or, you know, just like little nice things like that. What did I learn about him? Well, he first, he told us a bit about the conspiracy theories how he used to work for the government and they were doing some kind of program where they were trying to splice human and dog genes. So he affectionately in my house was called Peter Dogman Biss. And you know, if I referred to him as Peter Biss, like, oh, Peter Biss said hi or something, I'd need to clarify Peter Dogman Biss <laughs> to my husband. Um, and then a little bit about, he said he had family at one point but the story changed a little bit. I think he said he had children that don't talk to him or something like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> he worked for the government, that kind of thing. Um, I have no idea what he did. He just, the, the, the dog person thing was the big story. And he said that he was like on the ground level of that and they were trying to shut him up. So, um, somehow there was like this big conspiracy against him in particular because he knew things that he wasn't supposed to tell people so the government was trying to make him look crazy or something like that and like they he would he would say the government took away his home how, how did you learn about of his passing um, first my sister got an email from her friend and then they announced it in my mass this morning actually they the priest let the community in general know that he had passed it's interesting we've had people ask if there would be a service I wonder how many people would come if there was oh I'm sure a ton of people would come but I think because he was so vehemently anti-catholic we probably wouldn't have it because he wouldn't want that right. but if there were I mean I'm sure we could get the community like to just come out for a candlelight vigil or something I mean a ton of people like, Everybody would show up, for real. He a nice man or a mean man? Nice man. What was his name? Peter. He was staying under this tree for a long time. 
Where do you think he went at night? Um, um, do you know what he was doing? No, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Where do you think he is now? In heaven. in heaven. Yeah, I know Peter. I come here almost every day, you know? Yeah. Uh, to put a gas on my car. I'm a taxi driver. Uh, he was very friendly and, you know, I feel very, very sorry, you know, what's happened to him. Um, how did you learn that he passed away? I came here uh, to put a gas on my car. I asked the cashier, you know, what is going on here? I saw a flower on the tree, under the tree. He told me Mr. Peters died. And then, you know, I feel uh, so sad. I feel, you know, uh, very touch, you know. What's Do you know happened? how he died? I really don't know. I don't know. They told, they saying that uh, heart attack, but you know, I'm not sure. And you talk to him every day? Always. Whenever I come about? in, you know, how are you? How are you doing? How's business? He used to be a taxi driver in Chicago. Ah. So you know, just you know, we talk each other, you know, about uh, the business. What else do you know about him? That's all I know. He'd always say happy Sunday when he saw me walking up to Mass. Sometimes he'd be at Mass at St. Joseph's. You know, he seemed to be such a fixture. And he always had a, a nice word to say. He means Abdul, I drive. No, no, a little closer. The mic. Oh, with the mic. Oh. <laughs> My name is Abdul. I drive Iron Cab 46. And uh, Peter was an excellent man. And he's just outstanding. Every time he sees you, he will greet you, he will ask you your day, and he will talk to you. If you have a bad day, believe me, by the time you finish talking with you, I'm sure everything will absolutely change. We're going to miss him a whole lot. May he rest in peace. He was a good man.